Hello, my fellow hunters. How you doing? How's that end game grind for decoration? I I know, I know, I know. I know it's 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 an RNG fest, but you know, one day we will get that mythical attack duel. <laughs> Yoink! But it would make it easier if we knew the exact drop rates and best ways and what investigations and how to get them to go about making the farming the most likely and efficient, right? Because we all want to be this. Hours to frame by frame those jewels. I'm not even sure it was. Am I? I'm wasting my life. I'm fucking. You know what? I'm, I'm wasting my life. So the plan. We're going to go over what jewels drop from where at what rate because we finally have concrete percentages. percentages. <laughs> and we have the raw data for this thanks to Mr. Gaijin Hunter, a lovely person and a Monster Hunter YouTuber who I've been watching for years and without whom I wouldn't even know what emotion value was. He really was my get good trigger with the, with the, with the game. <laughs> Shut up, I'm not emotional, you're emotional. So essentially what I want to do with this is process the data so I can essentially go, you want that particular jewel? Cool, you need to do this investigation and to get the most of those investigations with four and five boxes, well, you simply need to do this. Via a awesome way I've come up with for farming them that we'll get to in a bit. Cool? Cool. So, what are we working with? Well, as you probably know, every decoration is either rare 5, rare 6, rare 7, rare 8, or category C, B, A, and S, respectively, and every tier of tempered investigations has a different drop rate, of course, for mysterious glowing worn and warped jewels that turn into, well, hopefully, the good stuff. So, warped is the best. They're the rare 7 ones that have the highest chance of becoming the rarest decorations. But we also have one, which is the rare six, which are still a fairly okay chance at getting something good. So these are the two that are chiefly on our mind. We can ignore threat level one because that's your pookie pookies and your geratidoses and then nobody, nobody cares about them. But we want threat level two and three. You see, threat level two, your Dogorons, your Diablos, your Basil Geeses, your Apexes, they have a 35% chance at one and a 26% chance at warped, which means that overall, your chances of getting a category A, which is your attack jewel type rarity, so good, is 7.14%. And your chance at getting a category S, which is your rare eights, is 2% overall on the whole per box. So, if we then look at threat level 3, which are the Elder Dragons, category A, your attack jewel 1, is 6.66%, which is less than category 2, and then category S is only 0.09% higher at 2.09. So what this initially tells us is that when looking for a specific jewel, Honestly, number of boxes is king, which might have seemed obvious, but there was a lot of speculation that amount of time or faints or the amount of people actually affect rarity and all that, but essentially, nah. So if, for example, you are after to attack jewels as hard as you can, well then you want the threat level 2 with the most boxes, because you can clear them quicker, they're easier, they're less hassle, you can find them easier to begin with the actual investigations, and we'll go over that in a moment. So you don't need to spend all your time farming the same five Elder Dragons, which tend to be a little bit more, let's say, volatile in their success rate, right? especially when you open up that whole SOS roulette. But of course, Tempered Elder 3 does come with Warrior Stream Stones at a much higher rate, and then the ability to drop Hero Stream Stones, which is what you need to augment your Rare 8 weapons, which is pretty good. So if you are not needing to augment, but just want as many good jewels as possible, well then you want to aim for your highest box threat level 2 as you can for the most efficient time to dual chance ratio, which I love because I essentially kind of was like, ah, oh, really? Endgame is the same five Elder Dragons over and over again? But because of this discovery, it opens up a whole slew of other tempered monsters that are so worth hunting, even for just the change of pace, and you don't even have to feel like you're there like, ah, oh, I'm kind of being less efficient because you're really not if decorations are what you're after. So, if you have a three-box Theostra and a three-box Odogaron, 
do the Adoga on, it really is so much more efficient. Unless you want the Rare Ray Augment, in which case you have to do Elder Dragon. So, firstly, if you post an investigation and then cancel it, you will actually lose a use of that investigation. I, I, I imagine most people know this, but I didn't, and I lost a few rare ones, and I, I just want to throw this out there. We want an effective way to farm mass tier 2 investigations for the highest chance at 5 and 4 boxes. Well, there are two best ways I've found to do this. Number one, if you already have a Diablos tempered investigation, black or normal, you're in luck. I spent ages testing every single tier 2 monster because I have no social life. <laughs> Load up the quest, just chill on the map for 10 minutes, observe their patrol path and see how many tracks they dropped per time passed. And in 10 minutes, Diablos comes out hilariously ahead with 33 footprints down in the tiny cave area. He barely leaves it. It's fantastic. He has a 3.3 TPM is amazing tracks per minute. I'm, I'm coining that phrase. However, you might not have a Diablos. And in it, by the way, if you don't, another couple good ones are Pink Rathian on either Wildspire or Elders. Let them do their thing. Very close areas. And if they fall asleep, just throw a rock and then leg it back to camp. It'll wake them up and then they'll move on with their lives. Or you can do Rathalos on Elder's Recess and follow him round at a safe distance, keep your ghillie on backup, and he leaves loads of tracks too. But Diablos still comes out on top. The others, not really worth mentioning over this next method, which is guaranteed, and for those of you without any of the above investigations, the Summons from Below quest. If you've killed three different Tempered Elder Dragons, you get given this by the Armory. It's the Rocksteady Mantle quest. And this has you against a Tempered Val and a Dogron. It's a Dogron that we're interested in. If you immediately grab the torches as you spawn, put them in his path, he will take damage, run backwards, then path back out, take damage, run backwards, and repeat. Each time he does this, he will leave a footprint for you to collect. Does make me question his, um, intelligence a little bit, though. He's like, oh, oh, what's that? I'm just gonna walk. Ow! Oh, okay, no, it's probably gone now. I'm gonna go back. Oh, it's still there. What's that? Ow! Oh, run, 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 run. Okay, I'm gonna go back now. It's probably fine. It's like, r really, Muscle Puppy? Like, I... Are you okay? And that should essentially get you enough tier twos to be working with. So yeah, that's not as effective as Diablos, but it is at least repeatable ad infinitum as it's just a quest you have that you can take optionally all the time. When it comes to Elder Dragons then, I mean essentially you can load up any of them and do the wait ages, then go collect tracks. Nergigante has a really good amount, but the best is still Kirin. If you still have the HR49, do it, follow him round for like the entire time, pick up tracks, and then abandon, well actually don't abandon, you need to return from or you'll lose the investigations you got and then repeat if you're lucky enough to get a tempered investigation for Kirin then do the same thing just follow him pick him up it's a damn sight easier than fighting the bastard <laughs> though a crit draw great sword sniping build does make it very easy and safe I can't do a video about that but yeah essentially that's your drop chances what you're kind of looking for to give you the best chances and hopefully you understand uh, what you're doing in terms of decoration for farming a little bit better now. I do want to show you the end of this hunt though, because I ended up getting the Kirin and then looked at my decoration rewards. Initially I was like, ah, but then I saw a crit boost jewel and I was like, ah, no, no way, oh my god, because it's a really good one, I was so happy. <laughs> and then I and then I moved through to the right, and there was a, there was a focus, a focus jewel as well, and it's just like, ah, I am a man now! <laughs> no, I will not be quiet! And essentially, life is good. Yeah, this entire video was just a really veiled attempt to show off my look here, so... Got you. <laughs> Hopefully you learned something interesting from this anyways. My name's been Rage, the like you've enjoyed the subscribe for more, and I don't know, I kind of like collating and then adding to myself community information, because really, a monster no community is awesome, and I want to build and foster it as much as I can, but let me know if you did enjoy this at the very least. I'll see you next time. A oh, good boy.
rage gaming with the video float. But that's all that's really relevant at the mo, but I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song and don't worry I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.